Welcome back to the Home Lab and I've got a short video for you today. What I want to show you is one of the many things you can build out of old bits from a microwave oven. For a long time now I've wanted to build a turntable to display some of the projects that I've made and with the recent acquisition of an old and broken microwave oven I thought well now's the chance to show you one of the projects you can do. So I've built a little turntable and what we're going to do in this video is very quickly look at what I needed from the microwave oven and how I constructed it. But just before we start, I want to say a huge thank you again to all of you for watching my videos and especially to PCBWay, who, as you know, sponsor my videos and always encourage me to make new ones and just let me do my thing, which is absolutely great. As you know, they make bespoke printed circuit boards, uh, but what they particularly do, which might relate to this kind of project, is 3D printing and CNC machining. Anyway, they've got a fantastic website, so why not go and have a look at that and you might get some ideas for your next project. As I'm sure many of you all know, microwave ovens are a really good source of engineering and electronic components and are far too good to throw out. You, of course, really need to know what you're doing when you take one of these apart, because in fact, they can contain lethally high voltages even when turned off. They've got capacitors that can remain charged and you need to know how to discharge those, especially if the microwave oven's been on fairly recently. Anyway, what I'm going to show you today is how I harvested the turntable parts from the microwave oven and how I made a little display turntable out of the bits I took out of it. I was kindly given an old and broken microwave oven, but as with all these things, much of it still works. So I did a little quick sketch to give me some idea of what it was I wanted to build. So it's the turntable and motor we're after. So the first thing to do is to remove the glass plate and the Lazy Susan roller and gently prise off the motor drive coupling. I saw these as genuine parts for sale on the internet and one website quoted $16.99 for one of these and that was probably before vat and carriage. Cheaper to buy a second hand microwave oven. I'd already removed most of the internal electronics and a plate that's on the bottom of the case so you can now see the turntable motor when I turn over the case. On removing a screw that held the motor in place, it could be removed totally and now we have the parts from the microwave that we need to make our display turntable. I ordered some shiny black perspex and cut this into a square on my trusty benchtop bandsaw so I could mount the motor and rotating plate onto it in a similar way to the way it was located within the microwave oven. I think these motors are synchronous as they're marked AC 220 to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz, 5 or 6 RPM. So at UK mains frequency, they'll rotate five times a minute, which is 12 seconds of rotation. I've also noticed that it sometimes starts up and rotates in the other direction. It typically goes anti-clockwise, but I've seen it going clockwise as well. I then marked out the holes that were needed and drilled them out with laser precision, still managing to get one in the wrong place. For the larger central motor hole, I used one of these stepped cone cuts, which I highly recommend. It's taken me years to realise that if there's a difficult job to do, there's probably a tool out there which will make it a lot easier. And this is a good example of one. With the holes cut in the right places, I could then mount the motor and also the feet, which are cheap doorsteps bought from a local market stall. And these are needed to keep the motor off the desk whilst making the whole thing a little bit more stable too. As it was a mains build, something that I don't normally choose to do, but limited as I was with the microwave mains powered motor, I was careful to wire it up safely cover any mains parts that could become exposed and protect it with a low current fuse as well as giving the motor case a good earth. I mean, it probably won't pass any pat test, but if you remember, it's just for my use, so that's probably okay. It's worth saying at this point that this is not something you should copy unless you really know what you're doing. 
I'd strongly recommend for your own safety that you get a 12 volt motor and run it off a low voltage power supply rather than using mains electricity. So after what seemed an age of building, it was time to peel off the protective covering on the Perspex and see the project in its full glory. It had taken quite a few hours to build, but the fun was in the process. I was glad to have a plan for recycling a few old broken microwave oven parts and now I had a good way of showing you a more 360 view of some of the projects that I built. So overall I was very pleased with this project and I think you're going to see it in other videos used to display some of the things that I've made. Um, I know it was a fairly simple construction but it allowed me to practice a few techniques and uh, building techniques that I haven't used for a while and especially making sure I drilled the holes in the right place the first time. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed that video and maybe you might want to make one of these things, but do make sure you know what you're doing first in terms of the high voltages inside microwave ovens, even when they're turned off. It's been a fun video to do. Um, do stay to the end of it because I always cut in bits after I finish talking uh, that I haven't used in the main body of the video. And of course, there are always some links at the end. Uh, do leave a comment. I'm always fascinated to read your comments and whatever happens, you know, I'll be doing another video very soon.